What is the difference between frogs and toads? Frogs and toads are among the most confusing animals in nature when it comes to actually telling them apart. Are there any differences between the two? Or are toad and frog just interchangeable terms with the same meaning? Well, stay tuned and find out, as this is exactly what we're going to find out in today's video. So without further ado, let's get started and learn more about our little amphibious friends. Frogs The word frog is actually a far-reaching term that includes all animals in the Anura order under the Amphibia class. The name Anura is derived from Ancient Greek and translates to without a tail, as all frogs have no true tails. Other notable amphibian orders are Eurodella, made up of tail-sporting newts and salamanders, and Gymnophiona, which consists of worm-like cassilians. Amphibians have been around for a long time and are among the oldest of all vertebrate groups. As a collective, they've been around since at least 370 million years ago during the Devonian period. They are descended from lobe-finned fish that evolved jointed leg-like fins to crawl on the seafloor and later on beaches and banks. As you probably know, amphibians breathe air using their lungs. Scientists attribute the development of lungs as an adaptation to certain environmental circumstances during the Devonian. Some of the lobe-finned amphibian ancestors found themselves isolated in stagnant swamp pools. Without proper aeration, these pools had very little oxygen. So to adapt, some of these fish developed the ability to poke their heads out of the water and breathe in gulps of oxygen-rich air. The rest, as they say, is history. Frogs, as we know them at least, have been around since the early Triassic, about 250 million years ago. The oldest frog-like creature, also known as a protofrog, is called Triadobatrachus, and its fossils were found in Madagascar. However, a relatively new dating technique suggests that frogs, or protofrogs, were around at least 265 million years ago, during the Permian period. This technique is called molecular clock dating. It involves the study and analysis of DNA and RNA nucleotide sequences to find the mutation rates of biomolecules and, ultimately, deduce when certain animals or animal groups diverged from certain ancestral lines. Today, we have well over 7,000 individual frog species distributed all over the world by the Arctic and Antarctic. This makes them by far the most successful amphibian group and one of the most diverse vertebrate groups overall. In fact, 88% of all amphibian species are frogs. Most frog species prefer the warm, wet climes of the tropical zones, and therefore most diversity is found within those zones. The Amazon Basin is the place to go if you want the best chance of seeing the widest range of these little critters. The further away from the tropical zones, the less the species' diversity. However, frogs may still be found in subtropical and even semi-desert regions. Colder regions like northern Eurasia or Alaska and Canada are less friendly to frogs and some species may be found there during warmer times of the year. You'll find that frogs and other amphibians have similar distribution patterns to reptiles who are also notably underrepresented in the really cold parts of the world. This is because, like reptiles, amphibians are ectothermic or cold-blooded. Ectotherms are almost entirely reliant on their immediate surroundings when it comes to regulating their body temperatures. To warm themselves up, they must be in a warm place like a warm pool of water or basking in sunlight. To cool off, they need to be in a cool place, the shade or a cool body of water. This is why most frogs alternate between life on land and in the water. This is in stark contrast to warm-blooded endothermic creatures like mammals and birds, which generate their own body heat and maintain body temperature regardless of their surroundings. So tropical and subtropical environments are the best place for ectotherms like frogs. These places have plenty of sun, shade, and water for their body temperature regulation cycles. Frogs' native environments also support their dietary and reproductive needs. All frogs are carnivorous, at least in adulthood. Their diet consists mostly of bugs – flies, crickets, spiders, moths, and so on. Some larger ones, like the giant African bullfrog, Pyxocephalus adspersus, are big enough to hunt and eat other frogs, fish, small turtles, and even birds. When it comes to reproduction, most frogs require ready access to water. This is because female frogs lay their eggs in water and, in time, these eggs hatch and produce tadpoles, aka baby frogs. Tadpoles are fully aquatic larvae that breathe through gills and swim using tails. They cannot survive for long outside the water and rely on their host water body for access to the plant material and plankton they feed on. That's right, 
Unlike their parents, tadpoles have more herbivorous and omnivorous diets. However, as they mature, tadpoles go through a remarkable metamorphosis that echoes the evolution from the Devonian lobe-finned crawfish to the leaping-limbed frogs we have today. Their limbs start emerging, their tails start shrinking, and they start breathing air with newly formed lungs. Their dietary needs also move to wholly carnivorous. Though frogs have loads of similarities in basic behavior, diet, and reproduction, they are still very different. Size is one such area of comparison. On one end, we have the minuscule New Guinea amau frog, Pedophrine amensis. These tiny frogs, believed to be the smallest vertebrate on Earth, are only 0.3 inches long from snout to vent, and weigh 0.00035 ounces, which is about 10 milligrams. Doubtless, you've taken pills bigger than this little guy. On the other end of the size spectrum, we have monsters like the Goliath frog, Conrau Goliath, which can grow to 14 inches in length and weigh as much as 7.3 pounds. In other words, this tropical monster is more than 300,000 times the size of the Amau frog. Skin coloration and texture are other areas of diversity, though all frogs have glandular skin that produces secretions. Some frogs have dry and warty skin, while others have smooth skin that is almost always moist. Some frogs have neutral camouflage-like coloration, greens, browns, and grays. Others have vibrant colors, blues, neon yellows, purples, bright greens, white, black, red, and others. Many species with vibrant skins and skin patterns are poisonous and use their eye-catching coloration to warn predators against hunting and eating them. Poison, you ask? Yep. Some frogs, like the blue poison dart frog, Dendrobates tinctorius azurus, and its cousins from the Dendrobatidae family, ooze deadly secretions from their skin glands. They're called dart frogs because many native tribes harvest them and apply their skin secretions on blow darts and arrow tips, making them poisonous weapons. Non-poisonous frogs also have secretions, but these are generally harmless if a little distasteful. As you can see from some of these defensive measures, frogs are not always at the top of the food chain, if ever. Though prolific hunters themselves, they spend a lot of time looking over their own shoulder. Snakes, birds, fish, and other frogs are some of their chief predators. To evade these predators and to remain in hot pursuit of their own prey, frogs have developed some interesting senses and mobility. Their eyes, located on either side on top of their heads, afford them binocular vision and an almost 360-degree field of view. This eye position allows them to scout their surroundings while most of their bodies are submerged in water. Frog ears, though not readily visible, are still very sensitive both in and out of the water. Hearing plays a big role in navigating their surroundings and communicating with other frogs. When it comes to mobility, frogs rely on their trusty legs. Frogs have four fingers on each of their forelegs and five on the hind legs. These toes are typically webbed to aid with swimming. The hind legs, in particular, are generally longer than the forelegs and are the heart of the animal's mobility. In the water, the hind legs kick hard and fast to push the body forward. On land, the hind legs provide the main thrust for frogs' trademark hopping and jumping motions. Toads Now, let's talk toads. Let's start by saying that all toads are frogs. There are no strict taxonomic separators between toads and what people call true frogs. Generally speaking, most toads belong to the Bufanidae family of the Anura order, and therefore count among the many families, genera, and species of frogs. Several other Anura families have a number of animals whose common name includes toad. Toads have somewhat unique characteristics compared to most other frogs. One characteristic is their dry leathery skin, often covered in many wart-like bumps. This is in contrast to the smooth and always moist skin of true frogs. These bumps are just a natural part of a toad's skin and have nothing to do with disease or infection. The bumps are constant in size and will not spread to your own skin if you handle a toad. Another characteristic people use to mark out toads from frogs is their relatively short legs and their restricted capacity for jumping. As a result of these smaller legs, toads move in small hops and crawls rather than leaps. Toads are also known for being a bit more hardy in drier conditions than most other frogs. Though still dependent on water for thermal regulation and reproduction, they can live longer away from water bodies and even find alternatives if water is inaccessible. Some toads in places with seasonal rainfall and dry seasons 
can bury themselves in muck or mud and hibernate until the rains come back around and replenish dried water bodies. Next is body composition. Many experts assert that true frogs have lean athletic bodies while toads are bulkier and appear fat in comparison. This body composition also lends itself to the different ways the two move about. Lean bodies allow for greater jumping power and agility than toads, which have a more lumbering and clumsy way of moving about on land. Coloration is another way to tell in some cases. If it's bright yellow, blue, red, or some other vibrant color, you're probably looking at a true frog. Toads are more likely to sport neutral colors that blend in with their surroundings. You can also tell them apart at their egg and tadpole faces. Frogs are more likely to lay their eggs near the water's edge, while toads lay their eggs around vegetation in the deeper parts of a water body. Furthermore, frogs' eggs are typically laid in slimy clumps that resemble a bunch of grapes. Toads, on the other hand, lay their eggs in linear strings, not clumps. The tadpoles themselves are different. Toad tadpoles are generally thicker than frog tadpoles, and they usually have a plain black color. Frog tadpoles are slimmer and flecked with different colors like yellow, hinting at their more colorful parentage.